Light starts out quantized, as demonstrated by blackbody radiation, and is absorbed quantized, as demonstrated by the photoelectric effect. So it stood to reason that it travels quantized as well. In other words, it's a particle, not a wave. But what about the earlier proof that light was a wave? For that, we revisit the Young double slit experiment. We've seen Young's diffraction pattern that told us light was a wave. So now let's fire photon particles one at a time at the slits. What happens is that for each photon, the detector registers a hit on the back screen at a single point. And at first, with a small sample, the hits seem random. But over time, we see that the interference pattern re-emerges. It's as if each photon was contributing to the interference pattern, even though there wasn't another photon to interfere with. The conclusion is that photons interfere with themselves. Turns out that they only interfere with themselves. Now look what happens if we detect which slit the photon went through. Here, a detector registers yes if the photon went through the upper slit, and no if it didn't. The detector sees a photon coming through the top slit around half the time. We assume that if a photon went through one of the slits and it was not the top slit, then it must have gone through the bottom slit. The resulting pattern is the pattern for particles. If we turn off the detector, we get the pattern for waves again. This duality puzzled scientists for years and is argued about to this day. A good way to look at it is light propagating through space as a wave. But at any time it interacts with something, it interacts as a particle. In other words, it is created as a particle and absorbed as a particle, but travels through space as a wave. In 1924, Louis Broglie predicted that this wave-particle duality will work the same for particles like electrons and atoms. By 1927, this had been demonstrated for electrons and atoms. With today's equipment, we can even see it for large 20-atom carbon molecules. So we have light waves acting as particles and particles acting like waves. We call it particle wave duality and it is a fundamental aspect of quantum mechanics and these were the experiments that started it all. So once we understood that electrons travel as waves, they will have a wavelength. Here's the simple derivation conducted by de Broglie. The momentum for light is Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. So the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum. And we know that for particles, momentum is equal to its mass times its velocity. So a simple substitution gives us the wavelength for the particle as Planck's constant divided by the mass times the velocity of the particle. Microscope resolving power, in general, is limited to about one half of the wavelength of the illuminating source. We saw earlier that visible photon wavelengths give us a resolution power of around 200 nanometers. Using around 200 kilo electron volts, we can accelerate an electron to 70% of the speed of light. With that, we can use de Broglie's equation, along with relativistic adjustments for space contraction and time dilation, to calculate its wavelength. We get a wavelength of 0 0.0025 nanometers for a resolving power that's 160,000 times smaller than light.